Good morning and welcome to AVA. I'll be your host and your presenter this morning. My name is Nicole Morris and uh, thank you all for joining us. We have quite a few people coming in. Um, today we're going to talk about um, AutoCAD Electrical and how you can actually share the custom content. Several of you are already doing that, but um, I have some uh, some processes that I've kind of come up with and um, we can talk about that. Um, I'll go ahead and get going on this. First, we're gonna explore the options that you have with AutoCAD Electrical for sharing, setting up a shared environment. And then we'll actually show you, I'll show you a way I would set it up. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about the environment file and some options that you can do there. We'll talk about the reference files and how um, those can be valuable. And then um, some next steps and some announcements, of course. So let's go ahead and get started. So AutoCAD Electrical, it, it has um, quite a bit that comes with the program. It's got a very large library that um, is out of the box just as is. So thousands and thousands of symbols and uh, manufacturing catalog data. But almost every company has some things that are unique to their company, even some things that they built or some things that they ordered that's not in there. So they're having to add to this custom content. Um, that is part of, you know, just part of the workflow. And it's, a, it's one of the areas where I feel electrical really excels is because it is so customizable. But you want to be able to share that content and have others take advantage of it. So if I add things to the catalog, I want, you know, my other users to be able to get that. So that's really what we're talking about here. So not just catalog, but custom symbols and uh, other data as well. And we'll go over what that data is. But first, let's talk about kind of the setup here. So there's a couple different scenarios that I came up with. Um, you do have the option when you install it, there's a check mark box that will just automatically share everything. I'm not a big fan of that. And the reason why is because troubleshooting or changing your mind later, you have part of the installation on the network and part of it local, and it's a little bit confusing that way. So what I do is I do out of the box installs, and then I set it up one of these three ways. Okay, so the network option, let's just kind of visit that one. Okay, benefits, it's probably the most simple one. You have one central location that everything is being checked in. Some of the challenges is that uh, you can have performance issues if you're working across a server that's slow. Also, people this year have been working remotely more than ever, right, uh, over VPN, and that's going to be slow. And so we've actually found people where you go to launch and you can't even get to your content because it's so slow. Um, then we've also seen some people that clash when they're editing. So this, this can work um, and it has worked in the past, but it's, it's probably not the best. Okay, so the second option here is a synced option. It's very similar to having a network option. So you still have that single source of um, information on your server, but then you sync it to a local copy of that okay and everybody would sync that so what the benefit of there is that your all your files will be localized so now you don't have to go across a network to get all your content and it'll make your program work a lot faster you can also take this offline so let's say you have to go out into the field or um, you, your network's down or for some reason you can't access the vpn um, you have everything you need on your computer. Okay, so, and the other benefit is that if you want, you can use the default location. So it's just less work to set up, I think. The challenge is, of course, is that you want to remember to sync the local copies. Um, you can do this through a sync tool. Um, some sync tools, they're usually gonna be third-party tools. One of them is, um, I found one from Microsoft called SyncToy. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and that you can even schedule in the Microsoft um, scheduling task scheduler so that it runs periodically. Um, most of the time, once you're done customizing, you really, you know, it, within your team, you would just say, send an email that says, hey, all 
hit the sync button or something like that, because it's not going to be every day. So that's a, a choice within your company. So just deciding how often you're going to sync and what you're going to sync and whatnot. Um, so using that sync tool, finding which one. So sync toy, and there's another one called sync back by two bright sparks that I like, um, real, both free and um, pretty easy to use. And there's many more and you might have one within your IT group that uh, is good. Some people will even set up, uh, the IT will even set up a script that makes it all happen in the background so that the users never have to deal with that. Okay, so these that's one of the options. And we're gonna go with a hybrid between the network and the sync today. Uh, uh, but either way, the, you know, you, I think you'll understand what, what's going on. So finally, the last one is the vault. And so those of you guys who use vault, uh, will like this option, but you can put your files in there. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, benefit also your files will be local again, just like the synced option, but you'll be getting it from the vault. So your synced version will be getting from the vault. It will require that people one manually add files to the vault and you'll need to notify your team when to get the files and update their, their local copy in their workspace. And then they'll also need to check in and out those custom files to edit them. Okay, so that's a little bit of a workflow add on the back um, that some people are okay with. If you're really experienced with the software, it's not a problem. But if you're new to it or you do it rarely, it can be a bit of a challenge. So um, I do recommend, again, maybe if you're going with, with the vault you, that you have us help you with that. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, so creating shared content. So I'm gonna visit how I would do each of these and then I'll show you some examples. First, in AutoCAD Electrical uses uh, my documents and then within there, there's an ACAD E2021 folder. Um, let me see if, um, I forgot to mention that um, if you have any questions, um, you can put it in the Q&A panel. There's a question and answer panel. Okay, so just be sure to ask questions along the way and make me um, stay on track here. So um, AutoCAD Electrical or ACADE 2021 in my My Docs folder, I take that folder and I copy it to where I'm going to go. Now for a networked location, I want to make sure that it's got read write permissions. Okay, and um, that, that's it. So that's the startup of it. For a synced version, you can copy it to like your C colon backslash ACAD 2021 or whatever version it is. Uh, you can copy it just to the C or you could leave it where it is. And that's one of the things I like about the synced option is that you can actually leave them in the My Docs location and then you don't have to redirect it anywhere. So that's kind of nice. The vault option, of course, you're going to copy it into your vault workspace just one time. Just one user is going to do this, by the way, not everybody. We'll talk about how the other users point later. So we're going to copy the files into the vault workspace and then um, you'll have to add them to the vault manually. Okay, I'm probably not going to show this one because it gets a little bit more than what we have time for today. Um, but I'm going to show these other ones and I think you'll understand how it's how it goes there. Okay, so after you've, uh, let's go ahead and do this part and then we'll we'll skip to the next. Okay, so I'm gonna um, open up AutoCAD Electrical. And right now, if you just out of the box install your software and you right click on the first project that's in there. By the way, in order to do that, you have to have a drawing open in the background. So AutoCAD or AutoCAD Electrical won't do anything with without having a drawing open. So just start a new drawing from scratch and leave it in the back. I'm gonna right click the current project and go to settings. Settings is gonna be our key and this is gonna tell us where we are. Right now it is using the out of the box location for that environment. If you are going to be using the synced one, you could leave it there, okay? But for mine, I took a copy, yeah. 
I took a copy and put it right under my seat. Let's pretend this says your H drive or something so that you actually have your uh, a folder that's a read write folder elsewhere. And I, I'm really after this file here. So this WDENV file is the brains of AutoCAD Electrical and it is in that folder. So I copied it from my MyDocs and I placed it in here. So we want to change where our program is pointing to this file. Now, again, if you're gonna leave them alone, you don't need to do this next step. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to redirect to be pointing to this new location. I've already copied it and now I'm gonna redirect. To do that, I'm gonna right click on my command line, go to options, and I'm gonna add two paths. If I expand the support file search path, I can go to add and I'm gonna to browse to wherever that is. All right, so maybe that's a network drive. Okay, and that's actually gonna be CAE data. So that's the folder that that environment file is in. I'm gonna add another path and this one is to the PLC database. It's underneath the AE data folder in the ENUS, that's our language and the PLC. The PLC for some reason is the only one that doesn't get picked up with our environment file. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. So we do that one manually, but it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna take this one, move it all the way up to the top. And this one all the way up to the top. And before you ask, no, you can't go down, <laughs> go to the top. Okay, so all the way to the top. So these two are the, the topmost. The way AutoCAD and AutoCAD electrical work is the first one it finds wins. So as long as it first looks here, it's going to find what I'm, what I'm putting out. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick okay. Now, in order to get it to read anything having to do with the paths, you have to close and reopen the software. I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna to go to the old location. Oops and I'm gonna rename it. By renaming it, it won't find it when it opens the program. Yeah. It will eventually. Still closing probably. Come on, behave yourself. Okay, just need to wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Give me just a second. Okay, now it went. I don't know why, but so it renamed itself. Um, it just it it needs a minute after it closes so that it's not um, still reading it. But now I'm gonna launch my AutoCAD electrical again. Now this process is the same for all of the older versions as well. So this is not a new thing, but it's just, um, I, I just have 2021 installed here. Okay. And it's helpful to have a project, like a test project that you can use. So I'm gonna open a project from my new location. There are some sample projects in there that I just leave in there. Uh, it's just nice to have them when you're trying to look at how it's supposed to work or if you're doing some troubleshooting. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna right click the project and I'll go to settings and I'm checking my work right here. So this third line here says, now I'm getting my environment from this new moved location. So if you're using a sync tool, this C drive location could be where I'm syncing to. 
But if you're going to bother with the sync tool, you might as well just sync it to the My Docs. But it depends on the sync tool you have, on whether you can specify. Because those of you guys who know about My Documents, let me pull this over. The My Documents folder actually has the user's name in there. So the path won't be the same for everything. Uh, let me see. So it's actually technically in users, your user, and then documents. So it, it's actually technically got the user's name in there. And so it's not the exact same path, okay? Uh, so if you're using your sync tool, you might have a problem with that. And it's a little easier to do it this way. So it's just a, another option for you, okay. So now that I'm pointing to that main location, I can make changes in that main location. That could either be the network one or my synced one, whatever you decide. But any changes that I make there will automatically affect my program, okay? So right now, by default, without doing anything, it, oh, sorry, without doing anything, it's going to go to this third one here and the catalog automatically gets taken care of. Another one is the PLC tool, the PLC parametric. It, you'll see that it automatically picked up this new location. Okay, that was that extra path that we added. Okay, so, so far that's all we've done. I'm gonna go ahead and close the program and we're gonna go to that folder. Okay, so in the AE data folder. So now I'm going to go and open this file, this environment file with Notepad++. Uh, you can use Notepad or Notepad++ if you want. Uh, I like Notepad++ because it has um, a little more graphic um, feedback, uh, line numbers that you can follow. Now it's a little bit of an eye chart, so I'm gonna go through it. Um, all the stars indicate that they are comments. So um, they're basically, you can ignore them, but um, I wanna go over a few that I think are important, specifically these variables. So these variables indicate that if you're using PFDIR, this indicates where the program files are, where the executable actually is. The DSDIR is the documents and settings location. The WDDIR, which I will use today, uh, is where my environment file is. So it's exactly this folder, wherever you decided to, that to be. Um, and then the symbol library. This is the out of the box location where the symbol libraries get installed. So I'm gonna scroll down here to one very important line, this WD user. It cannot be shared. So do not try to share this one. This is going to be the users documents and settings directory. So just uh, leave that alone. And uh, that's where your project database will go. And that is not something you share. So that's the way the program works. So we're going to ignore that line and we're going to come down and work on the symbol insertion and library paths. Now I've already done this just to save us some time, but I'll talk about what I've done. So to start with, uh, I'm going to be working in this new AE data folder that I've created and I created a custom folder called custom library and you can see that it's up there. And then after that, it's going to look for symbols in my custom library. Then it will look in the NFPA in the symbol libraries out of the box install in the NFPA library, and then it will look in the NFPA one dash. And then uh, as you go over to the right, it looks for the pneumatic and the, the PNID and the hydraulic menu. So that's all the schematic symbol locations for the libraries for default. Then it goes to the panel one and same thing for the panel. Now I actually use the same location for the panel since you're using naming conventions and your schematics and your panels have different uh, naming conventions, they'll fall together in the library anyway. And you're not having thousands usually, it's usually more like hundreds. So um, this is usually okay. If you have a lot, you might consider separating these into panel and uh, custom uh, schematic, okay? Uh, but it's not necessary. Okay, so, um, down here, I remove the stars from all of these lines. And what that means is they are now active. For the insert component dialog box, whenever I go and insert a symbol, 
uh, by default, it will lo look in this location. So this is the WDIR where my environment file is and then a subfolder underneath that. Same thing with the insert a footprint, that's a panel footprint. Same thing with insert a circuit. And same thing when I create a new symbol and when I create a new circuit. So what this is doing is when I'm creating circuits and when I'm using my custom circuits, it's automatically going to default to that location. So I'm not browsing around trying to find things. It also makes it a lot easier to share if you are specific about where you're keeping things. As I scroll down here uh, for the catalogs part, um, the WDIR language and catalogs folder is where you're going to find uh, the catalogs. Okay, this is the, the default catalog, and I definitely want to share that one. But this happened for me automatically. That's the way the program works. Now that I'm pointing to the same environment file, we're all using the same catalog. Uh, as I scroll down, um, you can redirect your project location. I like this one. I actually always remove the star from this line. This is uh, what forces the program to zoom extents every time you open a drawing, which is really a nice list routine that, that uh, happens there. Uh, but you have to remove the star from that line. Okay. Uh, down at the bottom here, uh, there's set files. These guys are the report templates. So if you're creating set files, you can put them wherever you want, but I actually like to keep them in my catalogs folder. And uh, again, I'm pointing to where my catalogs are. So also in the catalogs folder, I like to take a copy of the out of the box NFPA menu and put my initials in front of it and put that in that catalogs folder and point to it here. Same thing with the panel menu. These lines also have stars in front of them. So be sure to remove those and redirect them to uh, your custom menu. Uh, having a custom menu uh, and making one from the out of the box allows you when you have new versions that you can see what has changed from your old to the new and it keeps you from losing any data that you might have custom made custom. So I'm going to talk about the symbol libraries. So um, this is probably the most complex of, of all of the things on this list. Um, when you create your custom symbols, it will automatically create symbols for you. Uh, they usually go to your user folder, which doesn't really help if you're sharing things with people. So you want to move those into this images folder. I created a custom folder called images underneath my custom library folder here. You see that? Um, let's go back a step here. Uh, back. So here's my images folder. And you see I have a bunch of DLLs and SLBs. These are slide libraries. I have a list of what these are. Um, so not only do you have to keep your custom images in here, but you have to keep all of the out of the box images. Uh, I'll show you when we're back in the program that uh, all of the images in the dialog box will be pointing to these DLLs. And so once you redirect one, you have to redirect it all. So that's the only trick. I have a list of them and I also have a zip file. So just email me and um, I also have a doc that I'm publishing out there um, that you can get this from as well. That'll just list what needs to be in there. Okay, so that's probably the biggest one, the biggest takeaway for that. Um, okay, so just let me recap here. There's a few others that you can go through and use, but just again, if you want to use that line, you just got to remove the star from it. But these are the ones that I usually do. So again, here, the symbol insertion and library paths, the um, possibly the project locations, the report set files, your menus, and your slides. So once I save this and close the file, now when I launch the software, we'll go ahead and close it and launch it again. Once I launch the software, Once I launch AutoCAD Electrical, now I'm going to again start a new drawing from scratch and we're going to check it. So now we're going to test where all those locations are. To start with, I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to go to settings. And you'll see again, you've got your environment file now pointing to this new location. You've got your catalogs pointing to this location. And now you have all of these 
uh, individual places that were not mapped before. So when you insert a new component, for example, whenever you browse to a component, it will automatically go to custom library. Same thing on the panel side. Okay, one thing I wanted to do before I move on is that we have to update our project. So our project is a text file and it actually holds on to some settings. And some of those settings, if I go to properties, some of those settings are where to find symbol library. So I'm going to update that. I'm going to update where my schematic menu is. I'm going to update where my panel footprint libraries are. And I'm going to update where my panel icon menu is. So since I redirected all these, those four sections need to be updated on every project. What this avoids is uh, many of you guys have seen that message um, whenever you have your project out of date, you'll see this. And that's because it might be looking for an old library or it might not know where to find it. What this is basically is a, a list of the search order of where it's looking for files. So it starts in the current drawing and then it looks in the user folder and then in the current project folder and then in my custom library. And then it starts to go down the list in that project I just showed you and then the support file search path that we added. So it is quite a long list. That list is also kept here in settings at this bottom half. So this bottom half basically tells you where it's going to look. This is a, a list of the, the path sequence. Okay, so if you see that message, likely you need to update your project. So just your project one time needs to be updated with those new paths. Uh, and this default option pulls from your environment file, just those four. So the schematic libraries and panel libraries, the schematic menu and the panel menu, uh, those four. Everything else, your uh, create W block, if we go into symbol builder, You'll see that as I add a tag here, oops, just gonna drag and drop the tag off of there. So there we go. Drag and drop the tag off of there. And you'll see that it automatically went to my custom library and my images folder. Okay, uh, same thing for um, all of these icons in my configuration dialog box. And in my drawing properties, all of these icons are coming from that icon menu or that uh, men images menu or uh, folder, images folder. Okay, so that's about it. So right now, everything is pointing to my C place that I copied. I have to remember to sync that back to um, a centralized location so that all people are seeing the same thing. But my day-to-day -day work will be done on a local looking at a local folder. After you update the environment file, be sure to update these four if you've made any changes on just these four. The rest of them automatically take effect, so you don't have to do that. Uh, changing paths, you have to close and reopen the software, but otherwise uh, everything's good. One last little topic here is there are several um, several shared uh, or several text documents that are reference documents that allow you to create common ways of doing things like common component descriptions, locations and installations uh, and ratings, et cetera. So um, all of these are also, I put them in the same folder with the environment file. Okay, <laughs> thanks Claudio. So um, anyway, okay. so. I, I put those also in that same folder in my AE data folder. And just so that they are available to all my people. And, uh, you know, five of these are actually in a component dialog box. So those of you guys are fairly new to electrical. If you right click on any component, you'll see that this defaults here. See how it's coming from my shared location? This is the defaults for your descriptions, the defaults for your ratings, the defaults for your location, your installation. Those are all in here. And then your, your color gauge labels and your, 
your uh, source and destination descriptions. So um, those are the files that are there. Also included in there is the descriptions here for the, you know, editing this these values over here instead of saying line one, line two, line three. It will actually give a description for the dialog box and the title block mapping. Uh, title block mapping will probably be another AVA down the road. So if those of you guys who are interested in that, let me know and um, we'll make sure and do that soon. Okay, let's get back to business here. Okay, I wanna keep this on my time frame. So let me just go ahead and talk about next steps. So determine which way you wanna go with the vault. Um, happy to talk to you about that if you want. Um, experiment during downtime. You can't hurt it really honestly, just make a copy of it and experiment on your offline copy. Um, if you do do the shared environment one, be sure you have a backup because now everybody's working on a live copy. Um, but there's an AutoCAD electrical reset. So if you decide to reset it to factory defaults, uh, let me see if I can show that here. Uh, in AutoCAD electrical here, there's a reset to default settings. This is a really nice tool. And if you reset it to out of the box defaults, then you're back to where you started. It'll recreate that my docs and everything. So it's you can't hurt it. So it, it's worth it to experiment. Let's go ahead and let me go back to this. One more. Okay, so um, if you decide that you need help with this, this is a lot of information, but those of you guys who are more experienced, you might be able to pick it up from that. Some of you guys have already seen me do it with you. Uh, we do this as a service. Um, we could, we call it mentoring slash training. And if it usually takes me about two hours, an hour to two hours, because I'm explaining things as I go and kind of helping you so that you understand how it's set up and you can make changes during the year. Um, but also during that time, we could set up your title block and we can do some other things, uh, just helping you guys along and kind of figuring out where you are on that. So uh, mentoring and training, it's available in half day increments. So if you wanted a full day or a couple days of mentoring and, and training, we can do that. Um, Streamline and Lifeline, um, you know, if you have Streamline or Lifeline, you, you know, you can just call us and I'll help you with that. So um, I will do a blog post next week. So uh, be sure to check that out. And uh, since you came to the to this session, we'll probably email you about that so that you'll have it. So good. So um, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm sure this was a, an eye chart and a data dump for you guys, but it is recorded. And also, um, like I said, well, I'll be doing a blog post that'll be a little slower paced and, and have a lot of this information in there. So look forward to hearing from you and you guys all have a happy holidays. Okay, bye-bye.